Okay, so magic plan, uh, the new integration. Um, clearly you can see there's the button here. Um, and so this is how you configure it and also access the plans that you've created within magic plan to complete a room by room heat loss calculation. So I'm just gonna click on the button now. Um, so the first thing you'll do, um, or maybe certainly maybe your account um, owner manager will do is um, open up the configuration uh, page so just by clicking on that we put in some instructions here and all you have to copy is the customer ID um, and your API key and those two are then populated into here so there's your customer ID and also your API key uh, and then click update uh, once that's done um, you'll then see that within the plans area all of your plans you've ever done as a team within your magic plan um, dashboard access um, will appear in the heat engineer uh, um, workspace so you'll only need to configure that once so just bear that in mind um, whilst we're still on this page here just before I do click on the plans please bear in mind the disclaimer as well I'm sure most of you will will, um, will agree that sometimes LIDAR um, might need to be kind of repeated you might need to need to rescan a room to, particularly if it's like a challenging room um, and so if there's any kind of doubt in the measurements, um, then you might have to do like a, a manual draw of that particular room, which still actually creates a 3D image anyway. Um, but yeah, just, just bear in mind that any kind of LiDAR measurements um, or scan that you feel is of poor quality, I'd revise not to use it uh, um, uh, because, of course, we want to make sure the accuracy of the dimensions that are being populated are, are as best as possible. So once you've actually used Magic Plan to make your plan, it is important to add a datum. Um, and what this datum does, we've got some instructions down here, um, it allows us to orientate the rooms, the floors correctly. So the ground floor on top, um, so the ground floor, first floor and second floor, for example, we know which floors are on top of each other in the correct order. So we can then determine which rooms are above each other or, or below. Um, so by doing that, you'll need to place down a datum point and we've got some instructions on how to place uh, a red X. So you can do that by going to insert in the magic plan. So this is, you know, you'd open up magic plan in your on your uh, phone or tablet, click insert, go to objects, click annotations um, and then go to the red X. And then you can uh, highly recommend to favorite. So just click on the, the star um, and then place the place the red X, zoom in and then place it nice and neatly in the bottom left hand corner of, of uh, each um, floor plan. So that would have to be on the ground floor and the first floor if it was a two story building for example. So yeah, please place the, the red X in the bottom left hand corner for the datum. Um, and then uh, once you've imported those um, plans into Heat Engineer, we know exactly which rooms are above and below. So I'm going to click plans and you'll see that these are all the typical examples we've been going through um, and uh, you'll see um, you, your, 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 your plans and also your team uh, plans that you've created a magic plan will appear here. So we've got three buttons. So the first button here um, opens up magic plan in its uh, 2D environment, which I'm sure you'll, you would have all seen those that do have a magic plan account. Um, so uh, it's the same sort of thing you can see on your iPad um, or even an Android device if you've actually drawn it by manual manual um, and you can you can you know go between the, the, the different um, floor plans as well and have a look at that um, and then this one is a 3d one again you can see that within your tablet I should I said say tablet but obviously it's accessible on your phone as well uh, so yeah I'll scan this using lidar um, and um, we've got all the um, objects in there uh, and even the radiators there as well. So I've inserted, it's important to sort of like take note of that I will be covering up the radiators um, that as well, which we kind of import the, de the details into our system. So those are the first two buttons. The, um, the next one here is going to be regarding um, the creating the survey from plan. So this is the uh, critical part really because what we're going to be doing is extracting all the dimensions from the plans um, drawn the, from the drawings into our step three of our survey uh, for our room by room heat loss calculation. So I'm going to click on this, so click on that. So it's taken a, a while 
I'll say a while, just a, about five seconds, um, because it's extracting all those dimensions, all the parameters, such as what's below, what's above the room and that. So if I just uh, change that, the postcode, I entered the postcode and it's slightly wrong there. Um, there we go, got that. And then we've got our altitude, the meters above, uh, ground temperature, external design temperature. So that's all kind of like standard stuff. Um, room features. So this is where we have uh, extracted all the information from the um, magic plan drawing that you've created. Um, so we've, by default, we have um, entered in all the rooms that were built at 2000, but I'm sure you'll agree that it's really quickly to change that. And just those that are new to the system, um, if I wanted to say, well, actually, they're all... Um, say 2023 for example click that in there click OK um, all I would do is use our copy all feature and I can click copy all so it ticks all of them in fact actually imagine if I only these two rooms I wanted to keep as 2000 so I'd leave them unticked and then I would go to that year so 2023 it's going to copy to all those rooms click save uh, and now that has changed uh, those years, but also it, it, it updates the relevant air change per hour for those particular rooms. Um, and we've looked on the plans because in this case, I know that I've used a datum. So this means that a datum has been used to align the floors. So that's, you'll see that symbol there. If you don't see the symbol, it means that one of your colleagues or yourself hasn't used the red X for the datum, um, which means it's, it's gonna be not necessarily 100% accurate for rooms above and below. Um, we have got a, another algorithm in there just to sort of align stuff, but um, it's better if you, if you do put a datum. So this one, I know there's been a datum there and I can be happy that rooms above and below there. If I scroll down a bit further, you'll see that we've got three rows here, which are gray. Um, now within Magic Plan, it does um, uh, name a few other rooms, such as a wardrobe and a cupboard and, and so uh, if it's if it's one of those rooms, typically we're not interested in heating them. So what we've done within Heat Engineer is we've um, excluded them from the report. So if I kind of scroll to the right, you can see that um, we've got this kind of exclude from report button here. And on these ones, we've we've kind of activated it. So if there was a particular room that was other and you wanted to heat it, you didn't have a particular name for it, you can still still click on that to include it in the report. Um, uh, so that you still have that option. But I think in most cases, we don't want to heat a cupboard, a wardrobe. Um, so that's why we've kind of grayed them out there. So let's scroll up there. Um, in some instances, you might find that you've made some changes um, to the magic plan um, and you could have already completed the majority of the work here for the survey, for the reports such as building materials, etc. and you don't want to redo it. So what I've done is if I click on this button here, you'll find that if there were any changes to room names, we can update that from the magic plan. Um, any uh, orientations of the plan as well, so we can update the rooms above and below. And then any changes to the radiator, such as like notes and, and photographs. So I can sort of like pick and choose what I wanted to sort of play there. And then I click update and then it will update that appropriately. So uh, not, not accordingly. Um, so, yeah, that's the that's the resync magic plan just to sort of update everything, because there are often times when you go back into a plan and you might make sort of slight, slight tweaks to a drawing. Room dimension. So this is where it all gets uh, serious in the sense of like what we've just been doing is extracting all the dimensions. So this is um, for us now just to sort of like check we're kind of happy with these um, dimensions have been brought in. Um, so I'm going to make the assumption that I'm kind of happy with all that because I've checked this a few times already, as you can imagine. Um, so, but yeah, that's great. It's got all the dimensions in from the magic plan, floor area, room height, external wall lengths, windows, internal wall lengths, uh, and, and external doors as well. So I'm really kind of happy with that. And obviously that's been done within seconds. When you've come to the when you come to the, the rooms of vaulted ceilings, there will be an opportunity for you to here to, in this environment to make changes if need be. So um, you will find that within the Magic Plan environment, it doesn't really cater for vaulted rooms as well as heat engineers. So what 
what we've done is, is clearly still enabled the feature within the dashboard here for you to go in and edit. So if this kitchen was actually a vaulted room, at least you could access this, uh, access the dashboard from your iPad or your Android pad um, and go in and, and actually change um, that room to a vaulted room. Um, so there's still that option there. You can you can do that. So making making those kind of changes. So going to walls. Um, Magic Plan doesn't import building materials. Um, this is something which we are kind of working on. We do know they have custom forms, so we could create a custom form and uh, and what we had asked them is to copy that we can copy it over to your accounts. Uh, if you wanted it, but unfortunately, they don't have that facility yet. But they are developing pretty, pretty fast as well on on uh, suggestive, suggested uh, inputs that we've given them. So, um, but as you know, it's quite quick and easy to put a building material in there. And so, what I'll probably do uh, is just sort of fast forward this section here, um, just so we can kind of like get a move on and uh, and show you right towards the end. So. Bear with, I'll be fast forwarding this clip. And there you go. So I've just quickly populated um, the building materials for the walls, windows, doors, and floors and ceiling. Go to next. And then we've got our final result um, as uh, those uh, veteran users of our software, you'll find that yes, we've got our quality assurance check we can go through, but those of you that are new to it, um, gives us an opportunity to double check the postcode because that dictates the external design temperature um, and uh, obviously the heat loss can be influenced by a large floor area in this case it's the kitchen so yes that is correct um, our rooms above and below so I could go back to step two and just check that and then also uh, what does affect the, the high um, heat loss is also which is uh, what has the highest U value so here we're just sort of pointing out what is the highest U value uh, and where it, which room that contains in. So I'm happy with that anyway. So yeah, we've got all that. So the, the last kind of step I wanted to show you is just to really uh, point out the emitters and the radiators. So I'm going to now click on the heat source select because first of all, I do need to make sure I've got a, uh, a heating model in there, heat source model. So I just can leave it that at the moment. Type in, uh, and I'm going to select a 45 degree flow temp. I'm just quickly doing this because I want to show you the the feature of uh, the emitters and radiators, which is brought in um, from Magic Plan um, from the notes and the photographs. So here now, if I go to the toilet, because I remember I did create a radiator. There. So the the within Magic Plan, it doesn't have the full list of radiators we're used to, like K1, K2, uh, P1, um, K3, etc. So it does. It, so you can use water radiator, and you can at least type in the height and the length. Um, but when it comes down to other information, like you know, really, what is the name of it? It's, it, it won't allow us to have that. So what we've done is we've customized it. So at least you know that you have a radiator in there with the height and the length and details. Um, uh, the good news is that Magic Plan does allow you to enter notes. So in this case, I entered in K1. And also, which is really good, is you can take photographs. So this just ensures that if this was taken by me, it reminds me that, yes, okay, it's a K1 radiator, I've got a picture and I've got a note in, but also if it's one of your colleagues that sent this survey from Magic Plan, at least you as the designer at this point can like, say, oh, actually, it's a K1 radiator, and then I can go in and actually change that over. So if I just go to, okay, I'm going to put that as a K1 now. There we go. Change that to a K1. That's all good. Click save. Um, and, and it's actually changed that detail. Yes, okay. It's, uh, it doesn't quite meet the output here, but you get the idea. So it's 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 good that you can quickly go in and, and kind of change that there. Um, so um, that's the bit I wanted to point out to. That probably should have been at a delta C of five or between five and seven. But again, you get the idea. Um, so yeah, so, re so any um, radiators that you've added in Magic Plan, um, if I go back to this bit here, so there you go on there. Uh, I'll just illustrate this. 
So the radiator in the toilet, if I click on that one there, and I go to notes, just to show you what I did within Magic Plan. If I go to photos and notes, this is where I would have added in. There you go, there's the photo and there's the note. And you, within your, within the mobile application, whether it's your phone or a tablet, that's where you can add that note and the, and the, and the photo there as well. So just wanted to sort of point that out there. Um, okay, so that's up there. So yeah, that's how you use the Magic Plan feature. Um, I'm sure I'll be adding other sort of tutorial videos and fine tuning those videos as well. So look out for those in the future. Thank you.